we're going to talk about now is uh, compost. And we sort of went through the process of composting. And now we're going to talk about actually compost. And compost, in a sense, is a relative term. Um, you can have compost that is considered uh, compost, but it's actually mulch. And um, places uh, that will buy that kind of compost will spread it along roadways and uh, maybe along or, or around ornamental trees in uh, municipalities. Um, and then there's other levels of compost. Um, unfortunately, there's not sort of like a, a legal term as to how compost would be defined, but I'm going to help us define it for our purposes here on the farm. And um, if you were to be selling your compost in the future, these are sort of the guidelines you'd like to follow. We're, we're striving for the highest quality of compost we can get to, and that would also mean like the highest level of maturity. So for example, this compost right here, we just moved this from um, the pile. This would be about three months old. You can see that it has, it has this sort of texture to it. It's still, um, has some, you know, ways that you can determine what it was made from. However, people at times would even use this as a growing medium. Certainly, you could probably grow tomatoes in this, but I would not advise ever using it for any other part of the farm. And we'll see why in a minute. We'll go over the different types of maturity. The age of this pile is only three months old. This pile that it's been joined with is more like four months old. This pile here is um, probably older than five months old. So that's another consideration and I'll go over it in more detail. But here's another interesting uh, thing to notice. Now we measured the temperature of this pile before we moved it, this pile meaning this right here. I'm now measuring the temperature of this pile. Now if you look inside you can see the gorgeous texture there are little pieces here and there that it was made of, but you can see a uniformity, a certain um, color that it is. And of course, you can see all the worms crawling around. This would indicate a certain level of doneness or maturity. However, what I've done here is I've put a thermometer here. We tested this pile and it gave us a temperature, an ambient temperature of just above 80 degrees. This pile here, is actually almost 100 degrees. So it's a little bit deceiving, even though the uh, crumb and the uh, way that the compost looks, it still will not pass our criteria, which I'll go over in detail in just a minute here. Um, if we were to compare it with the older compost pile, what you'll see is the temperature will drop precipitously down to more ambient temperatures again. This is another indication of that it's mature and ready to use for your growing medium. So let's go over the sort of four basic criteria that the compost needs to reach when it's ready for farm use. So number one is that the compost has to be older than four months. So even though um, someone may use this for their tomatoes, it has not reached that initial threshold of being older than four months. This compost has, and so has this one. But our second criteria is that the compost needs to, if once you add water to it, it needs to reach um, only ambient temperature. So today it's a little bit above 80 degrees, and so the compost should be around that zone. So as you see here, this compost is only 80 degrees. This compost, we just measured it, and it's 100 degrees. So what that means to us is, is that there's still enough bioactivity happening in this compost that it's not mature enough to use in most growing contexts. The third thing being a maturity test. Now, there are many types of maturity tests, but I'm going to show you a maturity test that you can do here on the farm. It has several layers to it. We'll go into it in a little bit of detail. One, of, one aspect of the maturity test is doing a growth test in these uh, boxes here. You'll see, when, and we'll address them in just a minute. The fourth and final criteria that the compost must have is that it has to maintain those ambient temperatures for around three weeks. In other words, it 
you would go out and take the temperature once a week and make sure that there isn't some flush and rise in temperature and that it's finally reached this sort of wonderful homeostasis and, and place of really uh, not changing so much. I should say at this point that we are going to determine when the compost is ready to use and you can store it and use it for various different things, for potting soil, uh, turning it into your beds, putting it around your fruit trees, various things. It's good to use your compost within a year's time because even though the temperature is stabilized, um, the compounds that we're breaking down have stabilized, things will continue to move. You know, there's a, there's a term called entropy. Things move towards entropy, meaning falling apart, changing. And so the compost will slowly change over time and it will become more sort of mineralized and not have this sort of living element in it um, that we're trying to capture within this year. Okay, so let's talk about the aspects of a maturity test. So one of the first things that you do with the maturity test is what I did with the pile behind me, is you take it in your hands and you just look at the crumb. You just really explore, is it relatively uniform, small particle sizes? right? And that it has a kind of a uniform look to it. So as you can see, there's quite a difference between the way this looks. And you see how it has big pieces and, and big clumps. This is a little bit more mature and I would say it pretty much passes our visibility test. And certainly this passes our visibility test. You can see the gorgeous crumb and everything. Now the other thing that you're looking for is the color. Look at this color. It's, I always try to find the adjective that would best describe this color. I mean, it, sometimes I just say it's delicious, right? It's sort of a brown black. It's what you would expect the color to be. It's not a light brown, but it's not black. That's what you're looking for. So that's the visual test. The second part of the maturity test is of course the smell. You wanna take it in your hands and just give it a good smell. Your nose is an incredible indicator of off chemicals, things that may have gone awry in the compost pile. So really breathe it in and what you should smell is a little bit like how your eyes are reacting to the color. You should smell this earthy, delicious smell. And it's kind of addictive, right? You just wanna keep really smelling that wonderful smell. If I were to go to this pile over here, that is our, basically what we've determined is our immature pile, and I would give it a smell, I would say it has like a sweetness to it still. It's lacking that earthy, earthy smell. Let's see what this smells like over here. This is closer to what we're looking for. But again, it's not quite as earthy as this mature compost. Now we're going to talk about the a really fun thing that you can do on the farm. And um, I really encourage people to do these kind of maturity tests. This is what these flats are our maturity tests. On one side, this is compost with sand. It is this compost with sand. 10% sand, the rest compost. I haven't added anything else but water and the seeds. And the reason why you want to do that is you want to see the response that the seeds have to growing in this medium. Then you want to be able to compare it to something that has been tested over and over again, something that you would buy in the market right? Some sort of potting soil blend. So that's exactly what this is, a potting soil blend, this one right here. So this is our control and this is our test. And what you want to do is gather whatever seeds you have and clearly you want to use the same seeds in each tray and you want to use different types of plants. Here I've used radish. The radish will tell us just the basic germination rate. Is it greater or equal to 
the soil, um, the potting soil mix. We're looking for something that is actually on par, equaling the soil mix. And sometimes, if we've done it right, if we've hit it out of the park, it should actually respond better than the store-bought soil mix. Okay, so let's take a dive into these growth tests. I'm gonna move this compost thermometer out of the way and we can really look at the response that we're getting here from these tests. Now they are gonna tell us, or these tests are telling us, many different things, so I wanna point them out. One is the actual rate of germination. That's, of course, incredibly important. If you're uh, creating seed trays or if you have um, your seedlings in your garden bed, you, of course, want a great rate of germination. So let's compare these two. Um, the radishes, I, uh, each row was initially planted with eight radishes, and you can see in the um, compost, one, that the first row has eight, and then the second row has six. If we look at our control over here, it looks like we have five and then um, six. So the compost actually um, created in the radishes a much more uh, stout uh, germination rate. If we look at the corn, which represents, of course, the grasses, it, they're equal. And um, so that's good to know too. You want to at least make sure that your compost is not falling behind the control. And if we were to look at the beans, we have uh, five in each uh, row is what I planted in the beans. And in the control, interestingly, uh, we again, like the radishes, fall behind in the germination rate. So overall, the compost, this compost right here, has created a really nice medium for germination. The next thing that you would look at is the overall sort of health color of the plant. And as all of you are farmers or gardeners, we'll um, have a good eye for that. And you can look at the different colors of green. You can look at the uh, first uh, cotyledons, the first leaf formations to make sure that there's no uh, uh, disease showing or no strange uh, genetic uh, you know, mutation coming out or anything like that. And both trays, I would say at this point, look pretty good. Now I would keep these in here and I would start to wait till, you know, of course we get the true leaves. Uh, the radishes are just starting to emerge their true leaves. Um, and that way you could get yourself a more definitive test. Uh, lastly, so we've, we've planted the, the, the radish and the corn for germination rates. Uh, the corn, uh, being in the grass family, you could pick wheat or rye or any of those other kind of grasses. We just look for that for as another way to show how well it is germinating. But the beans in this situation are here to show us if there's any residual uh, nitrates or um, compounds that were not finished in the composting process. And for right now, I am seeing wonderful results from the beans, meaning that they're showing beautiful unfolding of their leaves, no strange coloration. Interestingly, uh, you know, these were all planted at the same time, all sowed in different, you know, these two different flats. But the beans in this uh, control are a little bit behind the beans in this flat. Um, also, uh, I would wait just to see how the beans in our control unfold, and then you have a better comparison of the two. But all in all, uh, this is a wonderful growth test. It tells us that our compost is great to use on the farm. Um, there's one last thing that we're going to look at, which um, is always really fun to do, and that is the root structure, because compost uh, creates not only usually vibrant foliage on the top, but a really nice healthy root system. Um, lastly, I want to say that you can do these on-farm germination tests. They don't cost you anything except for the seed that you're putting in there. Um, but if you're going to sell your compost commercially or if you want more knowledge as to what's happening in your growth test, and or if your growth test does go awry, like let's say these beans start to show very strange behaviors or there's browning that's happening in uh, your leaves as they start to form, it is at that point that you need to send a sample into a soil laboratory because at this point you can't measure the chemicals on farm unless you have your own soil analysis laboratory. Um, so 
that's uh, the extent of what you can do on farm. Okay, so let's take uh, a look at the roots of these plants because a lot happens under the ground. And in some ways that's what's uh, most important to us at this point. Um, so first we can take uh, one of these corns from our compost, which again is just compost and sand. And I can nicely uh, break away the uh, soil, the compost soil. And you can see uh, there's a, that's a little bit of the sand that is from the mix. And uh, you can see basically the extent of the root mass. So I'm going to put that right here. And then let's take this for comparative reasons. And again, I, you know, I should um, say that this potting soil mix that I got at the store is made of all sorts of ingredients. It has um, uh, blood meal in it, cottonseed meal, and it's designed to perform. And that's why it's our control. But it has a lot of things added to it. Uh, and the compost, of course, is just the compost. So this is a typical thing that you'll see if you're comparing something that's grown in like a commercial grade potting soil mix. You see the roots here? That, that this plant definitely has roots. It definitely has a way to survive and, and get nutrients, but I would say it's rather truncated. Here is our compost control, and you can see that the root mass is much more substantial than the root mass of this other one. It, and one cool thing that you could do if you wanna be super nerdy is you can weigh this and you can weigh this, and it will give you a very definitive answer than just looking at it. If I were to knock a little bit more of this compost off, you can see more dramatically how extensive the root growth is compared to the control.